morning and uh, welcome everyone to class. What happened, Joseph? You've gone right at the back. Welcome everyone to class um, this morning. I hope you all had a good weekend. Um, just experiencing the power of God, the resurrection power of God, even as we uh, celebrated what he did for us on the cross and his uh, resurrection. I hope you all had a blessed weekend with the family and also with God. Uh, back again to another week of learning. Uh, today we'll be looking at the last lesson in Christology, chapter 13, uh, the Son of God. Okay, before we study about the Son of God, can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Can anyone lead us in prayer, please? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this moment, Holy Spirit, Father, Lord. This last session has submitted in your hand. Lord, you guide us, lead us. Keep your wisdom and knowledge. We will be able to understand the word of God, Lord. Lord, yes. Especially praying for men, I submit in your hand. Lord, you teach, him, teach her. Give her knowledge and wisdom. Lord, we will be able to and Lord, learn from her. Lord, thanks for this moment. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we'll study chapter 13, um, the Son of God. Okay. Um, now, even as we will be studying this chapter, or even as we will be talking about the Son of God, uh, we will approach this in a in a little different manner. Okay. Uh, we'll just step out of the realm of our time and space, and we'll step into the eternal realm and journey there even as we uh, talk about the Son of God. So even as we approach this um, uh, chapter, even as we study about the Son of God, we will approach this in a very different manner. Uh, we will step outside the realm, realm of our time and space and we'll step into the eternal realms and we will journey on from there and we will look at or study and talk about the Son of God. Okay. Uh, like just like to read three scripture passages for us. The first one is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God. Okay. We stop there. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God. Okay. We'll turn to John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and let's all read that together, please. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. It's not there in your notes, so you'll have to turn in your Bibles. I hope all of you have your Bibles with you. So let's read John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Let's begin. All of us together reading. In the beginning what was the Word, and the Word was God. And the God. He was he was in the beginning with God. God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So let's turn to Luke chapter one, verses thirty-four to thirty-five. Can somebody read that, please? Luke chapter one. Verses 34 and 35. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, the, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Amen. Thank you, Warren. So the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Okay. So we're going to be studying about the Son of God. And as I said, we will be stepping out of our realm of time and space into the eternal realms. 
and we will look at what we can learn about the Son of God or what we can talk about the Son of God even as we look at the eternal realms. Now we uh, read or scripture says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning. Okay, so this was in the beginning when God created the world. Okay, but before the beginning, there was God. Yes, before the beginning, there was God. So God was there before the beginning, and God was the cause of the beginning because it was God who created the beginning. Okay. So let's go back before the beginning of time. Let's go back even before the creation of the world to get an understanding of what scripture reveals to us took place even before the beginning of the world. So let's go back and look at scripture verses uh, to get an understanding of what scripture tells us or reveals to us that took place even before the beginning of the world world even before the world was created okay so what do scriptures reveal about this god who was there even before the beginning so we're going to look at scripture and we're going to see what scripture reveals about this god who was there even before the beginning so we look at a few things the first thing is that this god who was there even before the beginning of this world was eternal what is the meaning of eternal? Everlasting. No end, no beginning. Okay. He was, he is, he will always be. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 27 says, The eternal God is your refuge. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 27 says, that he is the eternal God and this eternal God is our refuge. Look at what 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17 says. Can somebody read that please? 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. Now, the, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, we honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So it talks about the God who is the eternal king, who is immortal and invisible. Uh, can someone else read Psalm 90 verse 2 and someone else can read Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Psalm 90 verse 2 and Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Psalm. Psalms 90 verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. So here we see that even before anything was created, God was from everlasting to everlasting, which means he is eternal. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Isaiah. Please, please go ahead, sister. No, go ahead, Sanjay. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? He, His understanding is unsearchable. Amen. Thank you, Sanjay. So here we see that he is an everlasting God. Okay, and the one who, this everlasting God is the one who created the ends of the earth and he neither faints nor is weary and his understanding is unsearchable. Okay, so this God who was there even before the beginning of time, even before the foundation of the world was eternal or is eternal. He's also self-existent. Um, can someone read John chapter 5 verse 26 please? John chapter 5, verse 26. John chapter 5, verse 26. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. 
Amen. So here we see the Father has life in himself means the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, who are God, do not depend on anything for their survival, for their existence. Okay. They do not depend on anything for their own dependence, for their survival. The Father has life in himself, and so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. So this God is self-existent. He's also a God who is infinite. So can one of you read Psalm 104 verse 1? Someone else can read Psalm 147 verse 5. And someone else can read Isaiah chapter 40 verse 18. Can pass on Some, the mic to somebody else here. Yeah. Psalm 104, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Amen. So here we see that he is a God who is great. Okay, he's infinite, which means there's no measure to his attributes. There's no measure to his greatness. There's no measure to his power. There is no measure to his wisdom. And there is no measure to his understanding. He's a God who is infinite, which means there is no measure to his attributes. There is no measure to his greatness, to his power, to his understanding, and to his wisdom. Okay. Can someone read Psalm 147 verse 5? Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Amen. So here we see that his understanding is limitless with no measure. And Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 18, what does the prophet Isaiah say? Isaiah 40, 13. 18. 18. To whom then will you liken God or what likeness will you compare to him? Yes, so to whom will you liken God to or um, what likeness will you compare him to? Which means that there is no one we can compare God to, okay? And there is nothing that we can compare him to because he is limitless. There's no measure to his greatness, understanding, wisdom, and his power, okay? And this God is a God of wisdom, okay? He has all wisdom. He has all understanding. And he has all knowledge. Okay. And this God who exists even before or existed even before the foundation of the world is a God who's a triune God, which means he is one God in what is the meaning of triune? Trinity, one God in. Hello? One God in Trinity. Three people. <laughs> Thank you, Sanjay. One God in three persons. Okay. Trinity means one God in three persons. Okay. All three of them are God. They are all equally God. Okay. So we believe in the Trinity. There is one God who has revealed himself in three persons. Um, and where do we find um, uh, Trinity mentioned in scripture? One passage in? Genesis, okay. In the New Testament. Jesus' is baptism, okay. Sorry, Lucy. Sister in First Peter. First Peter. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Can somebody read that, please? I think it's in the NKJV version, it's very clearly says. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Can somebody read that, please? But there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these are three or one. Amen. So if somebody asks you where in the Bible is Trinity mentioned, where is it mentioned very clearly? 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Okay. So these three are one, they are co-equal, and each of them fully represents the Godhead. Okay, And the Bible reveals to us that this God is the God of glory. Okay, This God is the God of glory. 
and uh, glory is the very nature the very essence the very expression of who god is so what is glory glory is basically the very essence the very uh, nature the very attributes of who god is so the glory of god basically is the expression of god's attributes it's an expression of his goodness his mercy his truth his compassion his grace his love his kindness his forbearance so the glory of god is basically the expression of his attributes so glory is the very nature the very um, expression the very ex uh, essence of who god is okay and god's glory is so precious uh, and god will not share his glory with anyone else okay like we read in isaiah chapter 42 verse 8 that his glory is so precious that it says isaiah says in isaiah chapter 42 verse 8 that god will not share his glory with another and god says that i will not share with my glory with anyone else so we see that each person of the godhead held or had the glory of the godhead in themselves okay uh, John chapter 17 verse 5, John chapter 17 verse 24 also speak about this and hence we see that each one of them in the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit fully represents the Godhead. Each one of them are God, each one of them are, um, are uh, you know, uh, fully represent the Godhead. So we see that even before the foundations of the world, there was this God who is eternal, this God who is infinite, God who is um, self-existent, God who is, um, uh, you know, great in his wisdom, in his understanding, in his knowledge, and also this God is a triune God, okay? He's a triune God, okay. He's also this God who is there even before the foundation of the world is a God of love. We see that there is love in the Godhead and uh, love defines the relationship between God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Okay, look at what 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 says. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8. Can somebody read that please? And someone else can read John chapter 17 verse 24. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 and John chapter 17 verse 24. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Yes, God is love. Okay. John chapter 17 verse 24. Father, I desire that they also whom you give me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. Amen. So here we see that even before the foundation of the world, there was love in the Godhead. There was love between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And love defined the relationship in the Godhead. We also see that this God is a God of life. Okay, this God who existed even before the foundation of the world, this God is a God of life. He is life. He has life in himself. He is the source of eternal life. He is the source of immortal life. And he has the God kind of life in him. John chapter 1 verse 4. Can somebody read that please? John chapter 1 verse 4. John chapter 1 verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Amen. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the life here is, what is the Greek word for life here? Zoe. Okay. Good. Zoe life, which means the God kind of life, the eternal life, uh, the immortal life that God has in himself. He has given us that life. So God has this kind of eternal life immortal life that he has in himself this god is also the god of light okay god is light first timothy chapter 6 verse 16 can somebody read that please first timothy chapter 6 verse 16 
who alone has immortality dwelling in unapproachable light whom no man has seen or can see to whom be honor and everlasting power amen amen so here we know that god he has life in himself this god is god of who is love and also this god is light he dwells in unapproachable light okay and this god is also the god who is the great i am okay he is the i am who dwells in the eternal now and also he lives outside of time and that is why he says that he is the i am okay he lives with us in in our time and space he lives in the eternal now but he also lives outside of time that means he's not bound by a uh, time and that's why he says he is the i am he is also the alpha and the omega we studied about this we read about this uh, that he is the alpha and the omega in revelation chapter 1 verses 8 and 11 revelation chapter 21 verse 6 and revelation chapter 22 verse 13 so as the one who is the great i am as the one who is the alpha and omega the bible says that time is irrelevant for god god lives outside time and space so for him one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day so what does this this verse uh, mean that you know one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is a, like a day for god what does it mean Yes, it just basically is an attempt to convey to us that God is a God who lives outside of time. Okay, uh, time has no hold on him. Okay, and time does not matter to him. He lives outside time and space. So before the beginning, okay, the I am stood at the beginning and at the ending of time, and he knows everything in between. Okay, I'll say that again. Before uh, the beginning of time, the great I am stood at the beginning. At the same time, he also stands at the end of time, and he knows everything that is going to happen between the beginning to the end. Okay, that is why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter forty-six, verse ten. Can somebody read that? Isaiah chapter forty-six, verse ten. Isaiah chapter forty-six verse ten. Isaiah chapter forty-six verse ten, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, "My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasures." Yes, his counsel will stand. He will do everything what he wants. This he desires to do, and he declares the end from the beginning or from the beginning to the end. So he stood at the beginning and at the end, and he declares everything in. It he declares everything in between that is going to happen, that is happening, that is happening now, and it's going to happen uh, in the future. Okay, Acts chapter fifteen, verse eighteen. Can somebody read that, please? Acts chapter fifteen, verse eighteen. Known to God from eternity are all His works. so known to god from eternity are all his works that means even before he created everything even before everything is unfolding in history he knows everything even before the foundation of the world okay so in the mind of god okay before the beginning the bible says that god completed all of his works before he even started it isn't that amazing how great this god is that the scripture says even before the beginning of the world the bible says that god completed all of his works even before he started it which means he finished everything from the beginning to the end even before it started isn't that amazing yes question so uh, having a look at this verse uh, will god also know that you know who will be saved and who won't be saved yes he knows he knew even before the foundations of the world even before you were born you were conceived in your mother's womb even before your mother was born 
your great grandparents were born he knew who would choose him and who would not choose him but we still continue to reach out and yes it's a free will for people who have yes touched. we're going to look at that yes we're going to study that as well yeah so in the mind of god the bible says that he completed all his works even before he started it he finished everything even before it had began okay look at what hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 says hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 can somebody read that please all of you with me yes hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 someone for please? we who have believed do enter the rest as he has said so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Amen. So here it says that the works were finished before the foundations of the world. How do we know that God finished everything even before it began? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3, the latter half says, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So what did this great I am complete even before it began to unfold in history? Okay, we're going to look at scripture. We're going to look at the Bible. We're going to look at what are the things that the, that the great I am completed even before it began to unfold in history. Okay, are you all ready? Are you all excited? Okay. So what did the I am complete even before he began to unfold in history? Okay. Uh, so even before history began, the great I am completed that he in his mind conceived and decided that he will have a family of people. He will have a family of sons and daughters who would love and be loved by him. Okay. So the first thing is, okay, if we look at how, this great I am, you know, had in his mind a family of people, sons and daughters, you and I, who would be loved by him, uh, who would love and be loved by him. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Can somebody read that please? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Amen. So he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So God decided that he will have a family of sons and daughters, people who he would love and be loved by him. That's the first thing that, uh, I, I'm just saying first thing, but maybe it's not just the first thing in the mind of God, but we are just looking at it in our order, okay? So what is the uh, things that the great I am completed even before began to unfold in history? That was a family of people. Second thing is he decided that he will be our father and that we would be his sons and daughters, that we would be his children. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. Ephesians 1 verses 5, having pre predestinated us to adoption as uh, sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Amen. So he predestined us or he decided that he will be our father and that we will be his children, that we will be his sons and daughters. And he decided that he would create people as free moral beings who will be created in his image and in his likeness. And however, you know, creating us as free moral beings, he knew that there would be a... What did he knew, know he, there will be? Even before God knew that he would create us as free moral beings, he knew that it will be a problem, right? It will be a problem if he creates us as free moral beings. He knew that we would rebel against him, that we would sin against him, and that we would give away what he has entrusted to us, to the enemy. Okay, all of you with me? Yes? Okay. So he decided to create us as free moral beings, but he knew that there would be a problem. He knew that we would rebel against him, we would sin against him. He also knew that we would give away what 
he entrusts to us that we will give it away to the enemy. He also saw that sin would taint the world uh, and to recover us back to himself would require the work of redemption. Okay, so God knew that all this is going to happen. God also knew that there would he would require the work of redemption to recover everything that he gave us that we've given back to the uh, we've given ever away to the enemy. So there must have been a discussion between the Godhead, okay, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, discussing among themselves, and the second person of the Trinity, that is the eternal word, spoke and said that he that he will he, he would have told God the Father, I will become your son, I will become a man, and I will become that lamb to bear the sins and take away the sins of the entire mankind and bring the people back to ourselves or bring the people back um, and by paying the redemption price and bring them back to ourselves, okay? So the second person of the Trinity, the eternal word became the lamb of God. The Bible says that he was or the eternal word became the lamb of God even before the foundation of the world, okay? So it was not just when Jesus came and died on the cross uh, that he became the Lamb of God, even before it took place in history, in the uh, Kairos time, it was something that was conceived in the heart and mind of God as a completed thing, it was a done thing, that even before the beginning, even before the foundation of the world, the eternal word became the Lamb of God. God. Look at what First Peter chapter 1 verse 20 says. Can somebody read that please? And someone else can open to Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 and someone else can open to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. First Peter chapter 1 verse 20 please. First Peter chapter God chose him. You yeah. can read, sister. Go ahead, Anusha. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sin. Amen. So it says, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. That means Christ was foreordained even before the foundation of the world to become the Lamb of God, but was manifest in these last times for you. That means it was what was a mystery in the heart and mind of God was revealed to us in uh, in history, in, in our time and in, in, in our day. Okay. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. Can someone read that please? All who dwell on earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. So we see that here, that, um, you know, um, the Lamb of God, okay, was slain from the foundation of the world. So even before the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain. And where do we read this? Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, okay? And because of the Lamb of God, okay, we will have redemption through his blood freely by grace our sins will be forgiven and we will be accepted as his beloved sons and daughters look at what ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins amen so it says in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Okay, so even before the foundations of this world, what is the great I am completed, completed in his mind that the Lamb of God was already slain for the redemption of the sins of mankind. And through his blood, we receive forgiveness of sins, um, uh, according to the riches of his grace okay so the god had saw through time and they saw that some will accept the lamb of god and some will reject the lamb of god
God. So even before the foundations of the world, the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they saw through time, okay, from the beginning of time till the end of time, they saw who will accept the Lamb of God and who will reject the Lamb of God. And they foreknew of a new beforehand the choice each person will make. It does not mean that God made the choice for us. It does not mean that he chose some of us for salvation, some of us uh, to be destined to heaven and some of us to be destined to hell. No, that is not right. That is not the nature of God. He's not a partial God. Like we read, I think in Romans chapter 1 verse 21, it's not a God of partiality. I don't know if it's 121 of Romans chapter 2, uh, somewhere in Romans chapter 2, but he's not a partial God, but we see that he knew beforehand who is going to choose him and who is going to forsake him. So he knew or he foreknew or he knew beforehand the choice each person will make. And he decided that those who make a choice to believe in the Lamb of God, that he would make them the, his sons and daughters, and they would be transformed into the very image of the Son of God. So all of you with me? Able to understand? So even before the foundations of the world, God knew who is going to make a choice, who is going to choose to believe in the Lamb of God. And he already decided that though these are the people who are going to choose the Lamb of God, and these he would make his sons and daughters, and these are the ones he would transform him into the very image of the Son of God. So God decided that those who would choose him, they would be conformed to the image of his Son, and he already predestined or he already knew, foreknew beforehand who is going to choose him. And he's going, he knew and he knows that these will be conformed to the image of with the likeness of his son. We read this in Romans chapter 8, verses 29 to 30. Can somebody read that, please? Romans chapter 8, verses 29 to 30. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to, to be confirmed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he uh, predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Yes, so here we see that he knew beforehand. Okay, who is going to choose him? And he predestined that they will be conformed to the image of his son. Okay, and he knew who is going to choose him. And these are the ones he's going to call as his sons and daughters. These are the ones who will be justified. And these are the ones he would glorify. So this verse does not mean that God made the choice for us. Okay, please listen carefully. God did not make the choice for us. He created us as free moral beings he gave us the gift of volition that means he gave us the gift to make our own choices so we choose him or we rejected him he did not make the choice for us but he foreknew beforehand who is going to choose him and he decided beforehand that these are the ones he is going to transform into the image of the likeness of his son so in time okay he knew who he knew each one of you even before the foundations of the world, he knew you're going to make a choice. But in time, when we make the choice, or we made the choice to believe in the Lamb of God, we now become his called, or now we become his sons and daughters. We are the ones who are justified, made righteous, and the ones will be also glorified. Okay. So what did this great I am complete even before the the foundations of the world or even before it began to unfold in history we saw that this great i am decided that he'll have a family of people he decided that he will be our father and um, he decided that those who accept him or choose the lamb of god will become his sons and his daughters and he predestined them to be conformed to the image of the likeness of his um, son okay and also, he, uh, what did he complete even before it began to unfold in history? He completed the spirit of sonship. So we were saying that even as the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were discussing among themselves, 
and God, um, uh, the Son, the second person of the Trinity, said, I will become your son. I will become a man. I will go down to the earth. I will become that lamb who will pay the redemption price. And even as he said that, the third person of the Trinity or the third person of the Godhead, okay, whom we know as the Holy Spirit, spoke up and said, I will assist the eternal word in his mission of redemption. I will anoint him. I will empower him. And I will raise him up from the dead. So this is a discussion that is just happening between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So God the Holy Spirit says that, you know, he will empower uh, the eternal word. He will empower the Son of God. And he said he will assist him in uh, assist the word in his mission of redemption he will anoint him he will empower him and he will raise him up from the dead so in the godhead or amongst the godhead okay they already had a complete plan of redemption even before adam and eve sinned even before the foundation of the world okay and the holy spirit also said that i will be the spirit of adoption i will dwell in each one of them who will receive the lamb of god and i will bring them into our family isn't that wonderful look at what romans chapter 8 verses 14 to 17 says can somebody read that please romans 8 14 to 17 romans chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Verse 15, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Verse 16, The Spirit himself be a witness uh, with our spirit that we are children of God. Verse 17, And if children then hires hairs of God and joint hairs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Sister, not audible, sister. Sorry. Here we see that the Spirit of God uh, is the Spirit of adoption. He said He will dwell in those who will receive the Lamb of God and He will make them hairs of God and joint hairs with Christ. Uh, Jesus okay so God decided that those who choose him also their names will be written in the book of life so the book of life was written even before the foundation of the world isn't that amazing the book of life was written even before the beginning even before God created the foundations of the world your name my name all of the names who accept and choose the Lamb of God and believe in the Lamb of God, your name was already written in it even before the beginning. Okay. And so the Godhead wrote the names in the book of life. Look at what Revelation chapter 13, verse 8 says. We already read this, but we can read it again. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Yes. So who will worship him? Only those whose names are written in the book of life and not those who are not written in the book of life. So the book of life was written, your name, my name was written even before the foundation of the world. Okay. And God said that he will go a step further. And he says that these people whose names uh, have written uh, are written in the book of life, I will cause them to inherit my kingdom. I will cause them to be not only part of my kingdom, but they will be heirs of my kingdom. They will inherit my kingdom. And that is why, uh, you know, God gives us the keys of the authority of his kingdom. So God prepared a kingdom or a kingdom was prepared for us as sons and daughters. So the God had also decided, even before the foundation of the world, that those who will receive the Lamb of God 
will be brought into the kingdom of God and they will inherit the kingdom and they will be heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ Jesus in the kingdom. Isn't that amazing that you are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus in the kingdom of God and you are part of the kingdom of God. Look at what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 25 verse 34. Can somebody read that please? Matthew chapter 25 verse 34. Anyone, the online students who would like to read Matthew 25, 34? Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Amen. So here, God has created or prepared the, the kingdom even before the foundation of the world. And he, has, he knows who are going to inherit the kingdom that is prepared for them and he says come those who are blessed by my father inherit the kingdom that is prepared for you before the foundation of his of the world so god said that this is the plan of the ages okay what is the plan of the ages that he will have a what is the first one to have a family amen thank you lucy you have a family of people who would be sons and daughters who would be uh, would love and be loved by him secondly Secondly, what is the I am complete even before it began to unfold in history? Redemption work. He decided that he will be our father, that we will be his sons and daughters. Okay, the third one, that the Lamb of God will become the Lamb that would pay the redemption price. Fourthly, that we will be adopted as his sons and daughters, that those who are adopted as sons and daughters will be conformed the image of his son. Um, fifthly, anyone remembers? <laughs> Before that, <laughs> the spirit of sonship, the Holy Spirit, you know, um, uh, will attest to us that we are sons and daughters. And then, sixthly, that our names are written in the book of life. And seventh, what's the seventh one? which I just mentioned. All of you are nobody's writing anything. It's not in your notes. Nobody's writing. You're just looking at space. And so I know nobody is listening. What is the we'll last? We'll inherit the kingdom of God. Thank God for Lucy. Uh, a kingdom prepared for sons and daughters that we will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, like we read in Matthew chapter 25 verse 34. So God said, this is the plan of the ages. And this plan was a mystery which he kept hidden within himself. So this plan was a mystery that was hidden within the Godhead. Um, so, you know, all of this was, uh, this plan was done and completed in the mind of the great I am. Uh, the end from the beginning or the beginning to the end was everything was completed, was conceived, was done thing in the heart and mind of God. But he hid this in himself as a secret, as a mystery. Uh, and, the, uh, and it was a plan that God alone knew that he would alone unfold. Okay. And that he would later on progressively reveal to the church. Okay. So all of this that was in the heart and mind of the Godhead, all that they had planned, all the work was completed, was done, and then was the beginning. Okay? So you and I are very privileged because we have the Word of God, which is this mystery which is revealed to us even before the beginning. We have the Word of God. Scripture reveals everything that is a mystery. The plan of God is revealed to us. And so the plan of ages which was already conceived and completed in the mind of God even before the beginning okay, of world is uh, the beginning of time uh, is now beginning to unfold, but everything was completed and done and then began the beginning. Isn't that wonderful that we have such a great, awesome, mighty God who's completed everything and then is the beginning and now we are seeing everything 
but we have the privilege of looking back and seeing and knowing uh, this great I am, this God who was there or existed even before the beginning of time. Okay. Any questions anyone ha has? I hope uh, you are able to understand. It was not Greek and Latin or Hebrew for any of you. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, Sanjay, Lucy, Pratt. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, we'll stop here. The next class, we will look at what happened in the beginning. Okay, thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you on Friday. Thank you, sister.